Greetings. We're here with Udo. I'm going to try to find out a little bit about what Udo does over around here. So, tell me a little bit. What do you do here? <laughs> that's a nice question. I ask myself all you the time. You ask yourself that same question. All right. That's good. Yeah. So, uh, first of all, I think it's um, very interesting to understand why is Truth Rinder now active with wireless testing and why are we working on cybersecurity and privacy? Mm -hmm. um, for us, it is very natural what we are doing because we started with electrical testing, mm -hmm. then we enhanced this to uh, the wireless testing right. on the Zigbee and Bluetooth testing, RF testing, and then we have seen this great demand on enhancing it for cybersecurity and for privacy. So, by the end, privacy is a very important human right. Mm -hmm. So, and to find understanding for trust. So what we do is, in principle, we sell trust for no longer only products, because products are combined with apps and are uh, connected to a cloud system. Okay. So we have to change ourselves, and we are now end-to-end -end working from the product development, mm. privacy by design at the yeah. beginning, electrical testing, wireless testing, cyber security, and even privacy. Okay. And what the interesting thing is, this has an impact on different businesses. For example, the health market, yeah. smart home market, the automotive market. Well, by the end, these are all functionalities. So IoT is for me the connected world and a car is just a function. Correct. A smart home is just a function. The health market is just a function. So there is a layer and I see also the regulations in the next few years mm -hmm. are not just going to in one direction. We have to change even our regulation so that we have a clear layer. What is the request for cybersecurity, for privacy across the different businesses? Okay. So, and this is very interesting because we are working with a regulator as well. Okay. And we do that worldwide. And uh, our challenge is now, because the, the market is so tremendously fast growing, how to get speed and how to build up our delivery, how do we enhance our laboratories. So this is a challenge which you, ha which you have on the moment. The... Okay. Well, let me try a specific example. Maybe you can go and uh, try to narrow this down a little bit. Uh, we see an awful lot of uh, uh, interest now in the idea of wearable electronics. How do you see uh, the entire security thing go and fit in with the, with the, the wearable electronics? Um, again, just what I said, wearables is just a function. If you measure in the future your, your, your blood pressure with your skiing uh, wearables, or if you combine it with your uh, bicycle and you want to, to learn about your blood pressure in different situations and all that stuff, this is just a function. What is a, the, always the same is CPUs are getting very cheap. The energy consumption is getting low. That means we can implement very easy IoT functionalities in things which are not connected now, but will be connected in the future. If it is eyeglasses, if it is wearables, though by the end this is just another function. The same situation is for testing. We have to ensure that we have safety in line, that we have security, and that we have privacy. And uh, frankly spoken, I'm a fan on thinking from the customer side. So if we are selling functions, please arrange that you inform the consumer as well which data do you collect for this. And build up yourself a digital strategy. So what companies at the moment are missing is they think in technical directions or they think in customer directions in the marketing field. But seldom they have a completed integrated digital strategy. So if you go to even world market leaders and ask them where's your digital strategy to communicate also with the consumer, which data are you using for what? And then you will be surprised that seldom companies have thought about these in depth, really. Are they collecting data which they make take, collect, for example, for predictive maintenance? Then you can easily explain this. You can 
have an app, why, what I do really not understand is, why don't we go to companies and tell them, okay, please develop also an app, which data are you using and please for what? For what are you doing that? And ex please explain it in the combination of a new functionality. And then all, this, all these things are getting fine. Because data is a new gold, everybody is knowing that. Mm -hmm. There's a gold rush going on. But I would say, please, before you use data, think about, about regulations. There is this general data protection regulation, which comes into force from 25th of May 2018. Uh, this is a regulator side. But for me, even more important, that's the human right on privacy. So please accept that the consumer should not be pressed to decide. I have to make my uh, um, my comment here, and I have to I have to accept it. Otherwise, I'm not allowed to use that technology. I frankly speaking, I hate this. Personally, I hate it. That is, that is really frustrating what is happening, and therefore, for me in my head, it is green data. So uh, I would like to have companies which make green products, they should also go into the direction of green data and saying, I have a fair treatment of your data and I uh, give you the possibility of a consent and this is exactly what is written down in the GDPR. So I love the GDPR and this is now the pressure which we give into the market when you have European data from European citizens, uh, then you are forced to work with the GDPR. That is the reason why we have developed a privacy certificate, okay. uh, one on the one side on the product and on the app and on the service, on the cloud service. So we can have an end-to-end -end, um, solution based on the GDPR and helping you that you really have during the assessment that you can work, uh, see our requirements and then you improve yourself. So it is really not so important that we just sell a certificate. For me, it is important that we come with the, with the companies in the discussion, how do we improve each other? Okay. Yeah. So that is the uh, agenda for these privacy okay. One more question. Last question. You brought, up this, uh, you brought up an interesting topic for me that I'm interested in personally. What do you see as the difference in the environment, or the regulatory environment, say, between North America and Europe? There was this Bundesdatenschutzgesetz, which is now enhanced, in, and basically this is enhanced to the GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation uh, in Europe. For me, this is one of the best regulations in the privacy market, though other countries will adapt these. So, in fact, if you compare other regulations, these are 80% similar. But in a sense of privacy, GDPR is at the front at the moment. I'm pretty sure that in the US uh, and in other countries, we will see that a GDPR similar situation will be adopted. Number two, companies want to supply their products into Europe. Though a company in Korea, the big ones which are here on the mobile uh, exhibition, they don't want to distinguish their product for the European market and for the US market or for, for Asia Pacific. So that means the regulation of the GDPR is quasi a worldwide standard because everybody who is producing in China products has to comply in, with Europe. That means the same products will be supplied with the same solution to the US. So de facto the GDPR is no longer a European regulation. It is de facto a worldwide standard. All right. Very good. Thank you so much. Precisely right.